Everywhere, man. What were you Can, doing so effectively to cause some major numbers? I mean, I thought they played physical. They had active hands. Um, you know, they just played it. They had a lot of attention on the ball. You know, there was um, just so many bodies on the ball and active. And, uh, they were just sharp. And, you know, I thought they did a good job of that. So, you know, it led to a lot of turnovers. You feel like you guys have adjusted to their defense and tried to find ways to kind of remedy what they're doing? Um, I think we've tried to adjust. You know, we've talked about a lot of things that, that we could do to attack them. Um, basically having two and three guys on, on our pick and rolls and stuff. And that's basically been uh, hitting the open man and making them pay on the weak side, uh, trying to keep the ball moving. Um, but it's just, it just hasn't worked out for us. Um, you know, it's one thing to say this is what we need to do. Uh, to be successful against them, it's another thing to actually go out there and execute it. And um, you know, when things aren't going well, you know, and they hitting shots, and you know, they crowd gets into it, the game just gets harder, and it, it gets harder to trust those plays and trust that it'll work out. Um, and we, as a group, we had a lot of situations where we might have over dribbled, um, and we played into the hands. You know, we dribbling in crowd sometimes, they get their hand on the ball, um, speed us up sometimes, and. You know, just a, a lot of turnovers, and they, they took advantage of it. You know, they got great production from a lot of guys. Nurkic really hurt you guys. Uh, is that just because you guys are playing more, paying more attention to AD and he's able to cut in? I mean, well, you, I mean, you look at Rondo, uh, penetration coming off pick and rolls, um, Drew Holiday. Then you got to worry about Anthony Davis. He caught a million lobs. Um, but you got you got to worry about other things, and you know that like I said, they got good production from a lot of guys. Worry about those two guys, and then Miritich come out and have thirty, and then Darius Miller is just knocking down three after three, and Ian Clark is hit, hitting shots and impacting the game. So um, it makes it that much harder to to deal with their main guys when you got other guys coming in, and you know it's just like a clockwork. They're just knocking down shots, getting their hands on balls, running out getting extra possession, so it just makes the game tougher. And throughout your whole career, you've seen double teams, yeah. and you've seen traps. What makes this one so effective? Because I don't know if you've ever seen you like this. I mean, seen me like what? Just been taken out of the game. Taken out of I mean, I've seen traps. Um, two years ago in the playoffs, the, the Clippers trapped me pretty hard. Um, but usually when you see a trap or people blitz a pick and roll, they fall out of it. They don't stay. Um, for example, it was times where I could come off and once the guard caught up, the big would leave. Um, and this is probably the first time where um, the big is just staying. I mean, the other guys coming and they just, they're making me give the ball up. And like I said last game, it's the right place to give it up and find the open guy. Um, and like you said, to not allow them to completely take me out the game, it's either make that play every time or you got to take a tough one. And I think that's the position that, that they put me in. Um, you know, so it is what it is. I think this is a different coverage than I've seen in any point in my career. And of course, it'll be in the playoffs because they don't have um, any other team to worry about right now. So they can come with it. And um, it's two and three layers of defense. Um, so it's tough to play against, man. It's, it's a challenge. After the first two games, you guys preached the positive. They were yeah. Close losses. After this one, feeling different afterward, you guys still feel like game four and you still make some differences? I mean, obviously, you look at it and say, you know, down 3 0, how many teams have done that? Um, but it, it can happen. And, uh, you know, in this matchup, we, like I said, we've split with them in the regular season. We played well against them. Um, the first two games, when we didn't play great, we still had chances down the stretch to win it. You know, tonight, obviously, a blowout, but. They shot the ball really well. You know, they made a lot of shots, a lot of contested shots. Um, things just went their way. And um, next game, maybe they don't shoot the ball so well. You know, maybe we have a better presence defensively. They don't shoot the ball well. You get one, and you're going back home, you try to get another one. But, you know, we just got to get a win. You know, at this point, we got to uh, have some pride, uh, go out there and just try to get a win and take it back home. Two more questions over here, right there. The Pelicans came into this in the playoffs playing so well. Did that entering the playoffs? Do you see anything like this possible, possibly coming? Do you see it as a, as a particularly difficult matchup, or are you kind of as stunned as most people are about this? I'm not stunned. I just think um, the West is so balanced this year. I mean, our record was 49 and 33, and theirs was 48 and 34, I think. So 
Um, it came down to the last two games where these positions, anybody could have been in any position. Um, but I, I just, like I said, I think um, it, it matters how how well you playing going into the playoffs. And we had a great streak, you know, 13 games. We were playing our best basketball. And then we hit a rough patch, you know, and that rough patch was coming into the playoffs. And that was when they started playing their best basketball. So I think that matters. But um, once you get to the playoffs, you got to be able to, to be sharp and understand that the season is on the line. And um, to this point, they've just outplayed us. I mean, you can just feel the dejection in Damian Lillard, but what a classy guy. I mean, not not all of these demonstrative displays of frustration, just being a professional, standing in his locker and answering these questions, knowing that they're going down. Okay, the history says uh, it may not be in game four, but they're probably going down. When a team goes up 3-0 in an NBA playoff series, they're 127 Ooh. and Oh, it has never happened that a team has climbed out of an 0-3 hole, but you got to appreciate the classiness of Damian Lillard. That's what being the face of the franchise is. Uh, a lot of times, uh, especially the young guys in the league, they think being the face of the franchise is just about uh, hitting baskets, uh, hitting game winners, you know, getting billboards up. Being the face of the franchise is when, it's, when times are hard, when there are tough times hit, you have yep. to stand in front of the microphone, answer the questions, answer them professionally, respectfully, and basically represent your team and your community Dame, I, I know this has been a tough series for him. He hasn't shot the ball, hasn't played as well as he would have liked. But that's true professionalism right there. That's what you want out of the face of your franchise. And, and I love this because so often we dog guys for showing yeah. their frustrations on the platform. And he actually held his composure well. Uh, I got a challenge for Dame, though. I believe he's that good that he's shown the rest of the league that he can't be guarded one-on-one. -on -one. And he's shown the Pelicans. Let's make no doubt, the Pelicans are showing that respect. They're showing three, four bodies, length. They're trapping pick and rolls. They're not letting, get, letting him get anything off. But I think the next development for him is making his teammates better, making guys, giving them confidence. You see Rondo making uh, Miritich better. You see Holiday uh, injected with energy. We haven't seen Drew play like this since Philadelphia. So that's the next challenge from me to Dame because he's that type of superstar, and he can take his game to a completely another level. Because he's, he's, he's got that type of talent. Yeah, and that's what I was talking about when I said uh, Dame and CJ almost have to take a page out of uh, the Toronto Raptors book yep. with, with and you talking about DeRozan and Lowry and how they're passing the ball more to their teammates. They're giving it up a lot earlier than they have in the past. And Dame's a guy that well, he averaged about, what, 27, 26 points per game this year. You know, maybe you cut down the points a little bit yeah. and try to get the assist to go up, take that number up to maybe closer to the eight to nine assists, and that can help your ball club out. Well, speaking of assists, Rondo had a lot of them. He had 11 and many dimes up high to Anthony Davis, who was just uh, a beast. Watch in your the head. Air, Gotta on get the up ground. and get Woo. down. We're going to hear from AD soon on Game Time, presented oh, by Kia. Hey. Best big man in the league. <laughs>